It's hot out here. I'm gonna try to get done what I need to get done today. Now we're gonna put this cam thrust plate on there. Just hold your cam in place, like that. Really pretty simple. I can even do it with one hand while I hold the camera. And this right here is your, uh, for your oil drip. And it just goes over here like that, like this is how this one's set up. Some people put Loctite in there, you can. I didn't. I've never had one come loose. Put it like that, and I, I don't know what the torque spec is, top of my head, maybe, maybe 17 pounds, I'm guessing, if I remember correctly. I just snug them up good and tight. Another thing is, when you put a cam in, is you usually have to take your, if you're gonna use the key, the cam key for your uh, sprocket cam sprocket usually you take the one out of here if you're gonna do that I just usually put them up against something and hit the back of this with a screwdriver just tap it with just a little light tap and then it usually slips forward and I pull it out with the pliers real easy then I just tap it in in the in the cam using the method you want I like a flat surface like that and just tap on it I had my timing chain soaking in oil this cam has the four degrees advance or four degrees uh, uh, retarding of the timing. I went straight up the dot here. This keyway with this dot means this dot. That's the straight up one. And that's at the 12 o'clock position. Same with this, 12 o'clock position. If I step back, you may not be able to see the dots are lined up, but they are. I do want to make a note that normally when I do a timing chain, I put this dot down here on, on the six o'clock position. It's easier to see that they're dead lined up that way, but I did it this way right now for reasons, reason why I got it set that way. So either way, it's, it's perfectly in time. Okay. They're all in, all the, all the roller lifters are in. You want that oil hole facing the cam. If not, they'll bleed down and you'll get lifter knock and rattle and everything else when you start it up. And these are really simple. They're just squared on the edges to hold your lifter straight so the roller lifter doesn't ro rotate. A flat tap at cam wants your lifters to rotate. Roller cams do not. Obviously your roller would be sideways. So these just hold it straight. But they just slip on top there like that. Now the the, the lifters can go up and down, but it can't turn. And then when I'm done, I like to push each lifter up out of there like that just a little bit to make sure that everything's squared away and everything's right. And if you're wondering what holds those in place, it's just this. Call it what you want. Spider, fish bone, whatever other cool name you can come up with. And three bolts just hold them down the center. Okay, to set preload, on this um, I like about roughly 40 thousandths preload but it's a hydraulic uh, lifter so we can go plus or minus probably 15 20 thousandths on that spec but 40 is what I kind of like I'm gonna be honest with you I didn't do this to this one but the right way to do this is to put a push rod that's adjustable in here, set your preload, take a caliper, measure it, and then order that length of push rod. Because they're forgiving, I didn't do that to this one. I'm just gonna eyeball it when I tighten it down and see how much it goes down. I'm gonna do like a spark plug gap guesstimation. And if it looks about right, I'm gonna roll with it, okay? These push rods, by the way, because the cam is a regrind, they take from the base circle. This, this push rod I ordered is 30 thousandths longer than factory. That should get us close by my guesstimation. If not, you know, it's $48 that'll wait for another project. Here's what they are. I forget what they're even for, if they're for a Ford or whatever, but they do gotta be, the Magnums 
the magnums do oil through the push rod so you got to have uh, the oil through push rod and obviously the oil through lifter so I'm just gonna uh, snug this down I'm gonna watch I'm trying to hold a camera here and hold on so I can see that plunger there it's starting to go in Mm, that was probably, if I had to guess, we're probably moving at least, at least 30 thousandths there. So that's going to be fine. I'm going to roll with that. That moved at least a, at least a tight spark plug gap, 30, 35 thousandths. Now we can go ahead and put this on. And we can tighten these up. And uh, everything is in, everything is in place. Now the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab an exhaust on the highest lift. The reason why the exhaust is on my cam, the exhaust has the greater lift. And as you can see, I'm not even anywhere close to coil bind on that. I'm not even going to measure it. So coil bind shouldn't be a problem. And if you look through the dampener spring that's on the inside there, um, you're not going to be able to see it here. I wish I could show you, but I can see the valve between the retainer and the um, valve seal. So uh, I think we got clearance, and I don't think we're going to have any trouble with coil bind on the spring. So basically, the last thing I do, and you generally don't run into problems that much with the with the stock rocker assembly. I got the stock factory magnum rocker, stock lifters, I'm, and I even got the stock heads. So pay attention to what I'm gonna say. It's poor geometry from the factory, um, but it shouldn't be any worse than it was from the factory. And what I look at is that it starts off up here, right over the valve, right over the nose, and on high lift, it stays, and on high lift on this one, it stayed on the nose. So. That's going to be good enough for this. I, you could probably correct the geometry, you know, uh, talk to B3, get shims, whatever. But that's not how this is going to be. It's going to be at least as good as it was from the factory. We know that these things from the factory ticked off 200 plus thousand without batting an eye. So I'm not going to worry about it. Obviously, check the spec for, for your rockers. Uh, I believe the Magnums are 30, Torquem at 30. Uh, LA, the rocker shaft is like 15 foot pounds so these will be 30 foot pounds so torque them down well guys I'm tired of uh, standing in the sauna today I'm gonna go ahead and button things up here close up shop I guess I'll put out one more thing on the cam I only use motor oil on roller lifters simply because I don't want assembly lube to be too slick if a roller doesn't turn you're in trouble so engine oil is all I'm going to use on a roller cam. That's me. Until next time, guys, I'm going to, time for me to shower and cool off. So long.